Good afternoon, good morning. It depends where you are in the world. I'm speaking from Zog. This is transmissions from the planet Zog. They live for love and appreciation. Their world is full of music, and it's my joy to present their way of living to you. If you could gather together all the very best of our beautiful Earth today and put it fully functioning onto another planet, you'd get Zog. It's perfectly evolving, and happiness is normal, and as is delight, bliss, and joy, they're all considered highly attainable. I'm Isabel M. A. I was born here on Earth, but I had the good fortune to live for many years on the planet Zog, where I learned all my musician skills. My solo aim is now to bring you many of their extraordinary, brilliant, and dare I say it, majestic ideas back to Earth. I want you to have a little piece of Zog in your lives. I've already spoken in the last three episodes about education on Zog and music on Zog and a little bit about architecture. And future programs are going to cover agriculture, mining, spirituality, sexuality, politics, relationships, family structures. It goes on. But today's topic is probably the most exciting of all of them. And it's what underpins every aspect of their life. At the heart of everything lived on Zog is this deep understanding of the laws of the universe. Over there, it's not only spiritual gurus and nuclear physicists who understand that we are vibrating beings. We're made of vibration. But every single woman, man and child over there knows, understands and lives that. You and I know that colour is vibration. We know that from the rainbows when they appear in the sky. We know that sound is vibration. We know that there are other frequencies floating around we can't see. But the Zogians have developed way beyond this to know that every single sound we make has a specific frequency, an emotive frequency, and a measurable frequency, which gets sent out into the ether, very complex. But they also understand how these sounds can gather momentum. They pick up energy and strength and the more that this particular frequency is practiced that momentum that momentum is capable of drawing other like frequencies towards it they use this to create their world yes i'm going to explain as these like frequencies all weave together the current becomes stronger and stronger until what we know as real things tangible touchable smellable seeable things they can be created from the very first beginnings of feeling turned into sound and practiced. It's incredible, but that's how they work. I'm going to introduce you now to a wonderful woman who I know. It's uh, Lily, and um, she will explain the most basic ways that they actually practice this. So please enjoy it. And we're going to slip in some wonderful music here and there. So hold on to your seats. You're about to find out how you can create. Hi. <laughs> yes, sound. This is us on Zog. We are songsters. We create through sound. We use it as uh, an amplification of ideas. And we take a feeling and we use a song which is very carefully produced to make this feeling bigger and sometimes even better. And we take this feeling and sometimes in one song and sometimes in several songs, we move it from one place all the way through from a feeling until we are singing about a thing. And you may be surprised, but we use our songs to create things. So, for example, say you want to move to a new beautiful house. Or let us say you are ready for your lover, for the love of your life to come towards you. So we, the songsters, and we are all specialized. You come to us. So I like to work with the love stories. So 
say you are little Billy and Billy is ready, he feels he's ready for the love of his life and he will come to me and I will say, Billy, tell me of the feelings you want to feel. Tell me of how you feel when you are happy, when you are content, when you are excited, when you are enjoying being in the presence of someone else. We're not even talking about the beloved, we are just conjuring the feeling. And I feel this and then I feel into him and I let a melody appear in through uh, my head and my heart. I'm like a receiving station and I let this melody, sometimes it's like a hum. Now Billy, he came to me and he said, you know, I love the color of the bluebells in spring when you can glimpse them through the woods and you see the sun shining on the bluebells and it makes my heart sing and this feeling is how I feel when I am truly happy and when I feel so connected to all the wonderful things in life so I said okay let us feel this blue and let us make a song so we started to hum like This for me is like the blue sound, you know? It, uh, so we take this sound and then I make him a song, quite a simple song. And he said, thank you so much. He takes this lovely song, we record it. We have special place in uh, Zog, it's called the library. And um, all the songs are recorded there and anyone can access them. At any time we have little pods. They are kind of, um, they sort of slightly built into our bodies, but we take them with us, a little organic uh, but um, like a crystal structure, it is like a radio, and you can tune in to your song, any of your songs which are in the library. So Billy now has this song which is holding the essence of the feeling that he wants with his love. Now, this song will play and play in his head and mind, and he will sing along to it throughout the day, how many, however many times he wants to. And he will ask me to also to reinforce it, to sing it. And what we are doing is creating an energetic matrix. We are echoing out the vibration of the feeling. Now, he could just think it, he could just feel it, but when you put it into sound, it is like you have a feeling as soon as you put it into color or you give the flowers, you don't just have the feeling, you find the thing that echoes the feeling. It has more intensity. Now, sound is a wonderful thing. As you know, you know, it is spreading. It spreads out. And what we are doing is patterning the fields. The fields of the air, of the molecules, and of the finer things that you don't really acknowledge so much on your planet. But we know about these strings of vibration which coalesce and collect to form things. So he sings it. And more and more he is pulling this feeling to him. Now, this is the interesting thing. Somewhere, somewhere on uh, our planet, someone else, the girl for him, will also be doing the same. And she will be doing it probably simultaneously because uh, she has a similar vibrating frequency to Billy. And uh, her song will not be the same. There may be similarities, but she will also be singing this song and setting this energy matrix and what happens is that literally these join up they join up we are like the midwives of the ideas so this feeling is honed and it forms a bridge and a network now maybe after a week of Billy practicing this lovely feeling and he's feeling good and it's holding and strong and lovely and joyful in him and he come back to me and he say, okay, I'm ready for the next stage. So we say, okay, so tell me about the experiences you have had with people, with girls, perhaps with girls, yes, of the lovely times you have had. So how did it feel? What did they look like? What was appealing to you? What was attractive? And we go through these lovely like memories and maybe I will come up with uh, some ideas and he say yes or no. We may go to the library and look through different ideas of beautiful women and pictures or just other songs. We may just go looking for songs. And what we are doing is forming the threads of the next song. And the next song will be a more specific 
we have the, the feeling of the happiness and the joy with this lovely love relationship and now we are looking for more specific feeling with this person so I create a harmony song it is a beautiful partnership song intertwining masculine feminine balance joy contrast but in a beautiful uplifting way and we create the next piece of music now I sing it because it is very easy to receive you know I will uh, play i think uh, um, isabel has a song that she she can play this is one i made for uh, somebody else last week it's very interesting it is uh, like a summoning song so it gives you an example of what i'm talking about and then we have another stage which i will tell you in a moment there is a This is a song of bringing, summoning the beloved. But for Billy, I made a different kind of song. He's a younger person. But okay, so you get the feeling. We're using sound to amplify a message, a vibrational message, and let other similar vibrations join in. It is super string theory. That is the nearest thing you have, I think, to understanding this on Earth. But we use the song to amplify an idea to hone and focus and uh, to repeat and build the momentum of an idea until it collects and collects energy to it, people, events, situations, until eventually you have the result at the end. Now we do it for many things. We do it for the result. We do it for the beautiful joy and pleasure of working with each other in this way. So Billy, he, um, he sees this beautiful woman one day when he is listening to this song and he's never seen her before <laughs> she turns out she is traveling through his uh, town for a short while he sees her from a distance just as he's listening to the song and he thinks wow this feels good i like her so he has an appointment with me his songster in the afternoon comes to me and I say, okay, Billy, have you had any new new experiences? And he tells me about this beautiful woman. So I say, okay, let us, uh, let us focus more. Let us go to the third stage of creation. Now, this can be with, uh, as I said, a loving relationship. It could be about having a new little pet. It could be about your um, understanding of your job improving. It could be about um, uh, creating a baby or making a beautiful building. It, there are so many things, but this is how we work 
onzog. We don't just do action. We are using the science of vibration to create and we're loving it. For us, science is very juicy. <laughs> you know, it is uh, full of sensuality and uh, we really adore relishing in this kind of vibration. So, Billy, come to me. And we talk about this and I say, okay, let us, let us find the focus for this. Let us talk about color, which excites you. Let us talk about food, which excites you. Let us talk about a place. And we, we talk about all these things. And then we are on such a high. We talk then about this woman. And I let him pour out his ideas of what, what, how he could meet her, where he could be, how she could be like. And we just do this and I turn it into a beautiful song. Now this time I'm making a song about her. And he's just going to be singing this song about her. Um, I think Isabel will play this for you. Uh, or some of it now and then I will tell you how the Billy story finishes okay it is lovely to be able to talk to you on earth I must say greetings from Zok uh, my name is Lily a single love and how we created this. I'm going to tell you this third level because the third level of creation that we work with is uh, these very specific uh, details and uh, this is really we can only do this when we are very safe and feeling um, smooth with uh, what we have already created. So Billy could do this because he had been practicing, he'd been singing these other songs. He then had seen a glimpse of this girl. Maybe it was the girl, maybe not, but she was like the one he wanted, you know. So this is what we then do at this level. So uh, we had a third, uh, a third session and uh, he and I, we made little notes and um, I spoke to him, he spoke to me of little secrets he had not <laughs> said before, um, little tiny things like uh, how he had a dream and uh, in the dream this little bird appeared and then turned into a woman and so he liked this idea of a little light sound and he was talking about how it would, what kind of things he would like to be doing uh, when he was doing it, when he was together with this lady with this woman so 
we made very very specific song this time it was about how what things he would do when he's very very happy like uh, he loves to chop up wood because he has a fire in his house so he loves to chop wood when he's happy it says he, he says it makes him feel lovely he also loves to plant flowers when he's happy and he has a little um, couple of uh, sheep he likes to to look after and the sheep uh, we talk about animals because i know you have very very different kind of relationship to animals but he likes to play with the sheep and uh, they give him the wool and uh, he he likes to spin he's um you know we do these things on zog so these are things he loves to do so we make a little song about him doing these things and uh, we make also a little song about um how she is happy and we go into very details of uh, her in the house he lives in how she looks through the window and loves the garden how she is doing things that delight her and they meet together at certain places that he loves and the uh, places he has thought of and so he has this very very specific rich tapestry of a song and uh, so Billy played this song for uh, th 30 days and uh, during this time, he saw this girl again, another time. She was uh, passing out of the village, finally. And uh, he uh, just uh, <laughs> got a couple of minutes, you know, talking to her. But that was it. He was a little shy still, of course. Anyway, it turns out that uh, maybe it was, I think it was like in the third week, his uncle said, OK, Billy, I really need to go and buy some um, more sheep. The, the way we buy is also very different. But anyway, he wanted more sheep in his area. And Billy is, of course, so good with them. So, Billy, please come with me. So, Billy went with his uncle, still playing, still singing his song, you know, singing to his uncle, his uncle laughing about the song. He's very sweet and very specific. Anyway, uh, they went to the place where they sell the sheep. And, of course, the uncle was handling with the sheep. Um, and when they came to do the final exchange... Uh, of course, who was there taking the money but uh, the girl? Yes, it turns out that the uncle was buying from the girl's father and there she was. And this time Billy talked to her and so far they are very, very happy. Now this is sort of how we work. So we go from very general, we feed it, we soothe it, very beautiful and it gathers. Now this is a very, very personal thing. If we are talking about something else like um, building something or creating a school or a new idea, it is, it is different, but it is the same principle. So this is how we use the song. Um, I think... Uh, this is this is already I can say, but uh, I think it's uh, it's nice if you listen to other people talking about other specific areas. So I want to say thank you and uh, goodbye. Ciao, Isabel. See you again soon. <laughs> thank you, Lily. Uh, that was just a wonderful little story about Billy. I hope he's still happy today. I'm going to find out and let you all know. Uh, Zog uh, has slightly different time from us, but uh, we do get to I do get to hear the latest info about my friends and those they know. So um, I'm going to now talk to a chap who really knows his stuff about um, the kind of person that a songster is, because the songster, as you've probably gathered, is really, really important on Zog for the creation process. And um, as far as I, I'm concerned, I would call them um, very empathic and uh, very sensitive and aware. They're kind of like tuned in, turned on, tapped in, receiving stations. Um, and so their job is to really focus in on what the person in front of them wants. And it's it's a beautiful thing to, to watch. It's, it's very funny sometimes, very joyful. Anyway, who I'm going to be speaking to is uh, Tommy. That's his name. And um, he, yeah, well, so Tommy, can I just introduce you as um, you are one of the foremost songsters on Zog for um, creating uh, kind of built structures, is that that is correct, isn't it? The built structures are what I do specialise in because I, I do love the um, the synthesis. There's quite a lot of things that go into a built structure. It's about, you know, um, place and people, but also about materials and a lot of other things. Could you maybe just tell us um, what your training is or or what you actually, what your particular um, input is in a process when they're using a songster to create something physical like a, a 
building or I heard, I heard actually you were um, you were creating a school recently. Mm. That's right. Now, of course, a school is a series of buildings um, set in a certain kind of landscape. And uh, on Zog, we use a lot of landscape in our education, much more than you do. Um, but also it's, it's a collection of people and it's most particularly it's an atmosphere. So... My starting point. Oh, you asked about my training. Okay, so my training is uh, as a, a songster, of course, that was always my forefront strength that I've grown up with. You know, uh, my parents were also specialist songsters, different areas for me, but, you know, I grew up with that kind of feel around me. And then I decided that I did like uh, buildings. So I was quite fascinated with them, but I didn't want to do the sort of construction side of things. I wanted to do the the creation side because that got me kind of excited. It combined, you know, um, the the sound and the music and uh, the, the structure and the materials and the people. So that was uh, my training. I had like family influence and the songs to side. And then I, I did actually apprentice myself to an artist architect um as they called him here too uh but i ended up as a proper architectural building type uh songster oh so um tom could you tell us then you know what what the process is you know from sort of start to finish well okay so someone comes to me and says right okay tell me i want to build something and i say that's fantastic great now what do you want to build and 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 they'll say well i've got this idea in the night that yeah it's time for me to build a school so i say oh great you know that's fantastic so let's look at the kind of school so this chap was uh well you know i don't know i just want it to be a little bit free a bit more like um in touch with nature than some of the other ones really wanted to specialise in the way we relate to to the animals because of course on Zog we're very very close to animals but we wanted a really strong relationship so it was a lot of outside inside different textures different feels different materials so we were talking about the feel and the possibilities we didn't even know anything about shape or where or how many children or anything like that it was just like no we just need a school so we started to make little themes of um of the feel of the space. We had like an animal theme. We had a very wild animal theme. And then we had like a tamer theme. And then we had a, another theme, a musical theme, that was like the humans interacting with the different animals. And then we brought in one final feel, which was the feel of the school in its entirety. And this was a very soft kind of uh, sweet patterning uh, sound that we used to kind of link the pieces it was very very abstract just very lovely and we use this it was not many words actually more like just sounds i was just like oi, oi, oi. it's kind of a bit like you would think like maori actually but we had lots of beautiful instruments that we brought in some sort of cello stringy type things that we use kind of a bit like a harp with a bow and um and layers of those it was a beautiful kind of landscape we were creating with this piece of music now he went away and he and he played this music. He put it in the library, of course, like most people do. They take their song from the songster and they uh, enter it into the library. So anyone who's interested in any of that kind of feeling can pick it up and use it. So it was registered with the library. And uh, he started to play it and to sing it. And it was it was going around, you know, the village. People started to listen to it. Now, those people, of course, who were curious, had come up and talked to him. So, oh, yeah, actually, I quite like that idea, you know. I think that actually we could do this. So little discussions started to happen. Now, and about I think it was about two weeks later, he came back to me and said, right, OK, I think we can start on the plans, you know. We can start to think about uh, where this could be and who it could be for and, you know, how we can, who we can get involved, you know, let's try and bring the next process into it because you could see it was starting to build momentum. Just uh, And uh, at the same day, he found out through back through the library that there were several people wanting to get in touch with him, but these were quite far away people. So um, what happened? We sat down and we made the next piece of music and we started to, to look into the sound of the different materials we wanted he said look it's got to have a lot of it's got to have a lot of crystal and and stone structure because we've got to understand where we get our strength from and our nutrients and 
and uh, we want to, I want to have the stone like present for the children, but different kinds of stone. I also want to have the wood, but uh, it can't be too fussy, but we've got to have the wood that grows with that stone. So we're talking about these qualities of building material. And then he started talking about, well, we need the water because, of course, the animals will need the water and the children will need to understand how this relates to it. So we started talking about the water and how that water... So we brought in a water theme. We had different... We had the stone and the wood and the water. These were the themes that we started to bring in. And then we had this other thing that was the, um, the new idea that had come in, you know, as a result of the library, which was that people around Zog, but far away, were really interested with his new take on the school. So we said, OK, let's bring this into it. And that is that uh, this could be an inspiring kind of an idea. You know, it could be like a model. And uh, it could be next. I mean, what did you do with the... Um, you created this second piece of music, and I, I assume it went into the library and, and you played and... Uh, and, and your friend um, sang it. But, I mean, how does it get? This is what we're going to be intrigued in over here. So you've got this song and it's generating momentum. It's going out into the ether. It's gathering its equivalent interest. The song is like a little communication process of the feeling you're wanting. Um, and, and it's building, building the idea. But then um, how do you actually get this to happen? I mean, how does it actually, you know, get turned into a real piece of uh, stone and wood built with real people's, you know, skills? And, and um, obviously someone's got to, in some way, kind of pay for it, finance it, you know. I know, you know, how does, how does that then, then work? And what kind of time frame actually do, do people on Zog work with when it's a project like this? Well, actually, the thing about the time frame is that it doesn't really matter. It's interesting. It, well, it's not that it doesn't matter. It's just that when you've got an idea like this, sometimes it's got to grow and grow and grow because it's very full of specifics. You get the general idea really solid and you keep on reinforcing it. So we actually made several second songs with a whole lot of different general things and we put it together into a package and put it in the library and uh, started to, uh, actually my friend started, he took me with him. We went to these far away places on Zog where they were really interested and we started singing, that's how we presented, we just sang the songs first. It was a lovely kind of hush, you know, it was a real kind of welcoming, it's sort of like, a, oh yes, I do love this, I really resonate with this feeling. And then we had this beautiful sort of discussion and uh, the local songsters and myself and, and of course my architect friend, we all started like working together and we started to uh, get all these kind of ideas, you know, like who we could approach. And uh, so, so that was like setting the seed for something. So they created some songs of themselves. They took pieces of ours, ours but they added it in, you know, so they had the whole package. And uh, it took a little time, I think it was like three months, but what happened is that we kind of generated a new movement and the people who were really interested in caring more and, and more like uh, communicating with the animals, they came in and they said, right, you know, we're really interested in our children knowing more in this way. We want a beautiful place for them to come. So they started giving us donations from their land of different stone and, and wood. And, uh, and then we had other people who were saying, look, this is actually really, really inspiring. I'd like to do it for my apprenticeship in building skills. So we got this whole collection of people and we got then a, a project manager who was really, really interesting. And he came in because he said, look, uh, I really, not only am I interested in the project itself and the, the ideals, but if we do this, I have a very large family and they don't really have very good access to to animal products because of where we live and the way we live. So I'd like to do this if this will then enable my entire family to receive goods from, um, you know, all of the animals that you're going to um, look after in the school. So... Um, that is what happened. So actually, he didn't get paid. He did, but it was like the whole family got paid later on during the, 
you know, following years to come from this place. And this is how we finance it. It doesn't really need... Money is a different thing on Zog. It's like worth, but I know you're going to be talking about that. But uh, we had these levels. And when we finally got most of the construction up, but then, of course, we had the finer details of, like, who's going to run the curriculum? Who's going to be working in here? You know, who's the teachers? And we uh, that's the way we do it. The, again, a whole series of songs were set up for for the feeling in the classroom and uh, for the food that was uh, going to be um, served. And uh, it just, uh, you know, it went on and on. And it was a great project. I really, really loved it. Now, the way I was paid uh, is that, of course, I always uh, get paid in, in all my lodging and board whenever I'm going anywhere is always given by all the people who I work for. But um, I also got like a tithe into the school. So my pay was like into the future. It's just fantastic. So now I'm part of this richer community. My communities are just so full of incredible people. And we just do this. This is how we do it. We give it to each other. And we start the whole ball rolling with this music as a way of communicating the feeling and the image and the idea. It's just beautiful. I love it. Love it. Thank you so much, Tommy. Um, I really hope that everyone's kind of starting to understand the the beauty of this system of of using sound, using songs in such a powerful way. Now, I'm going to just play you something. Hope you enjoy it. And we'll be back to talk about more. I think we've got some very exciting examples coming up soon.
was Inspiration, and uh, that's a song that's also come over from Zog to Earth, and you'll find that it's um, a very popular dance track over here, uh, particularly in uh, California, actually, interestingly enough, and the festival circuit, but that was a Zog um, tune originally, so it's um, Inspiration, you can find it after um, under that name, Inspiration, Echo Your Love. So I've got something very, very beautiful coming up in a moment, but it's um, the first story part I need to, to talk to you about first is to use an example of when the creation process is used for shifting an emotion. Um, now, most of us, of course, are not really that aware about where our emotions are, but on Zog, they're very, very clear about what am I feeling right now and kind of where am I placed on the emotional scale because they know it's quite easy to move up and down um, and if they don't feel as good as they want to they know that they can move so they're very aware about these things now mostly you know people are very easy on Zog and then they're mostly in the kind of joyous end of the emotional spectrum um, but this is a story of, of a, a sweet young couple who um had a, a genetic inheritance of a certain kind of... Um, it was a, a sort of disfigurement, essentially, in the, the woman's womb, which meant that she keep, kept losing the babies she was conceiving. And she really, of course, really, really wanted a child. And every time there would be this, this grief that would come up. And um, because they're so skilled on Zog, they're very, very good at clearing through and moving through. Now... This lovely woman, um, she worked with uh, a songster who I'm going to introduce you to in a moment. It's Margareta. And um, they actually created some very beautiful music which was aimed to shift from a sense of grief and heaviness to a kind of release and a joy in the fact that this being had visited for a short while. It was about three months before she miscarried. And the idea was the creation of that particular song was to give uh, this lovely woman the chance to be clear and free. And, and every time, in fact, that she was conceiving, she was holding the baby for longer. Um, and the idea was that the more she could release these feelings of grief, the more chance she would have, actually, of her body working with her to hold the child inside her for long enough. So I'm going to... Um, play this beautiful piece of music specifically for that woman so um we're just going to do one last kind of little recap and uh and leave you with one sort of rather curious but um again beautiful uh piece which was actually written um by one of the songsters uh for somebody who um found they had quite a lot of difficulty with making themselves heard um they'd sort of been born with a kind of a speech impediment and and several there are some different languages spoken on zog it's not of course english but uh, they do their best when they're talking to us it can sound a bit funny sometimes when they talk to us on earth but um this particular uh, it was a, a young person about i think 14 <coughs> excuse me um was having some trouble with actually speaking different languages and this was one of the general pieces that the songster came in um, and just created. It was a completely made up language, in fact, like um, the pop group Sigur Rós uh, from Iceland. They completely make up their own language. Uh, it sounds perfectly fine and, and real, but it's it's uh, just made up. This song was is called La Rane. It sounds a bit French to you or I, but it's completely made up. Now, this song was given to, to this 14-year-old uh, um, and what happened was that um, she played it many, many times and used it to condition her sense of, of worthiness around language. She became so familiar with this made-up um, and very beautiful track and, and started obviously playing it to her friends and relatives and people around her and it was lodged in the library. And people started to realise how, how beautiful it was. And um, she actually uh, would perform it um, publicly. And she found that she was getting an excellent response from this completely made-up 
language. Um, so what was conceived as a stepping stone for her to gain more self-worth and, and um, the ability to communicate really worked. So I'm just going to give you this song, La Rene, and just show how the, you know, the diversity of the songsters, how they actually work in the creation process of all sorts of things, whether it's a thing or a feeling or a relationship or a journey or an adventure or a job. There are so many different things, but they're all created using the power and the wonderful skills and receptivity of, of the songster who's literally translating the idea with the client and giving it a sense, a give, amplifying the idea, sending it out as a very strong and clear signal to enable others to respond and resonate with it is is very exciting. Um, there will be much more about this in the Zog book when it is released um, next year, and many many beautiful illustrations. But for now, you'll have to content yourself with these uh, stories. So here is La Rane, and um, we may have time just for one short interview after that. Thank you. So that was the Larine, which really helped that little guy's life. Now, I've got one moment left with this very exciting. Um, she's a designer and she works with colour and Zog. So I'll just quickly hand her over to you. Uh, so this is a feeling I like to create with colour. 
because I see and I have color at the same time as the sound and the feeling. So some of them says to me, yes, I really want to feel well and peaceful in my body. I want to feel like regenerating. I say, okay, yes, I see mauve and very pale green. So we have this sound and I make a, like a, Oh, I cannot, cannot do it. You have terrible microphones here. But we get a little bit of sound. I think it is the theme music we are using, actually. But I use color with sound. I just want to give this idea to you because Isabel said, hey, give them the ideas of how you use it. Because it is like when you're making song, like a, a magnet with all the little electrons in it, you have to stroke them all the right way so that the, the magnet is strong and powerful. And this is what we do with the songs. We make very strong, clear, but feeling songs and they become the magnet of the things that you are wanting. Use these songs, use them to attract what you are wanting into your life, into your feelings and into the people around you and you will find all these beautiful synchronicities coming towards you and creating the project and fulfilling the desire. That is what we call songs. It is very active, very beautiful, very sensual and uh, I must say goodbye. Isabel says go! <laughs> so goodbye! Thank you so much. That's the last moment we've got. Thank you so much for listening to Transmissions from the Planet Zog. This was the episode on creation on Zog, conscious creation. This is how they make all their stuff, how they change all their thoughts, how they get inspired. They use music. They use song, the power of song. Tune in next month and I will be talking about something very interesting, I hope, sexuality. I'll see you then. <laughs>